<laughs> Fargo is an anthology show created by Noah Hawley inspired by the 1996 Coen Brothers movie of the same name. Each season deals with different characters, different locations and different time periods, though there are a few overlaps and connections. Season 2, considered by many the best season of the show, deals with a war between two rival crime syndicates, the Gerhardt family, a Martin Parr family steeped deep in crime, and the much more powerful Kansas City Mafia, looking to take over the Gerhardt's turf. One of the most fascinating characters of the show is this man, Hansi Dent, the Native American muscle of the Gerhardt family. He first appears as nothing more than a Gerhardt goon, but as the season develops and the beef between Kansas City and the Gerhards becomes more intense, it becomes more apparent that Hansi is a specialist, an ace in the hole used by his employees in stealth missions and open warfare alike. He is a close accomplice of Dodd Gerhardt, who fancies himself as the head of the family after his father's stroke, the same father who is said to have taken in Hansi when he was just a boy. Hansi also served three tours of the Vietnam War and holds a bronze star and a purple heart. However, this cold assassin, who appeared to be Dodd's right-hand man and reiterates his loyalty to the Gerhardt in a scene with Dodd's brother Beer, surprisingly shoots and kills Dodd and then sets up the Gerhardt by having them ambush who they think are the Kansas City mob, but it turns out the motel they attack is full of cops. Hansi kills the family matriarch Floyd, and the entire Gerhardt family is wiped out by the cops. The hows and whys of Hansi's betrayal is something I want to tackle in another video, a bit like how in a previous video we took a look at the motivations and machinations of Lauren Malvo, the contract killer of season 1. Today I wanted to take a look at a theory regarding Hansi many Fargo fans are already aware of, where the man's life post Fargo season 2 and beyond, and even his death, are detailed to us in the show, hiding in plain sight. As we know, though he kills Ed, Hansi is unable to take out the hairdresser Peggy, and with her in the police's grip, he opts for a life different from the current one he has, where he's been taking orders and being treated like dirt. Wanted by the cops and his face known, he meets with a man in his final scene, a fixer who gives him a fake ID. Hansi has of course been burned after an early attack by Peggy, and he talks about needing a face man to work on his face. Now the name that is on the social security card is Moses Tripoli, insignificant aside from the thematic reasons which the fixer mentions, but eagle-eyed Fargo viewers have remembered that there was already a character on the show named Tripoli all the way back in season 1. He appears in just one scene, played by Mark Atchison, and he seems to be the head of the Fargo crime syndicate. He abruptly brings up the subject of Sam Hess, an associate who was killed, and is insistent that the person responsible for his murder is found and killed to send a message. Now the theory is, as wild as it sounds, that Hansi is Mr Tripoli, that he got plastic surgery done on his face and ended up creating his own crime syndicate or taking over the Kansas City one. Now if this is true, we know what Hansi got up to in the 27 years between the second and first season of Fargo, and we also presumably know how he died, seeing as though the Fargo headquarters was stormed by Malvo in season 1 as revenge for them putting out a hit on him after he killed Sam Hess. Malvo works his way up the building, taking out the entire operation and by extension, surely, Hansi Dent. Now this sounds absolutely bizarre, but Fargo often dabbles in the absurd. I mean, there's literally a flying saucer in this season. So let's take a look at the evidence for this. There's the name Tripoli, obviously. Then there's the fixer's line about Hansi wanting more than a skin peel. Something structural, a new man, he says. He then asks Hansi if he will join a new empire, and Hansi replies by saying, maybe start one of my own. These are all very teasing pieces of dialogue that allude to the character we see in the first season, as is the fixer's next line, so that it may one day collapse and fall into the sea, which of course the empire does when Malvo storms into the building. Hansi is then asked if he will try to take revenge on Kansas City, whether he will try to apprehend them, and he says, not apprehend, dead, 
Don't care heavily guarded, don't care into the sea, kill or be killed. Head in the bag, there's the message. And this is almost word for word what Tripoli says in season 1 when he says, not apprehend, dead. Don't care extramarital, don't care not related, kill or be killed, head in the bag, there's the message. And he continues tucking into his supper. As if these clues aren't enough, during the fix and meet, Hansi is watching two boys get bullied, one of them deaf, and he looks like he's going to do something freaky to the bullies. And as we know, the season 1 Fargo mob had two enforcers, one of them, Mr. Wrench, being deaf, implying this is where Tripoli met the duo and he showed them the dark ways of murder and revenge. I mean, this is clearly not an obscure fan theory, is it? Like it or not, I think it's clear that the fact that Hansi becomes Tripoli is canon in the show. And it's not just some what-if scenario for us to ponder on. There's far too much evidence swinging in its direction and not a lot of counter-evidence available. You could say it's far-fetched, but again, UFOs. You could say that it is difficult to imagine a man as disciplined and hard-edged as Hansi becoming a grotesque, fat slob, but the thing is, we don't know the extent of the plastic surgery he had, and these insane cosmetic changes are, I guess, possible in this world. And there was a 27-year gap since the last time we saw him, more than enough time to become a powerful mob boss, and then slip into a role as a complacent, past-his-prime, aged, grotesque ogre. Plus, he has a plasticky looking face and speaks in that same stilted, laconic way. With that being said, it's probably not worth looking too much into Tripoli's looks. I imagine this was not something planned from the outset, and had this showrunners planned from the outset, they may have made some changes to the Tripoli character to make him look more similar. It is weird, isn't it? For a while, I wasn't quite sure what to make of this connection between the first and second season. Some of the links are really cool, like the main cop in season 2 being the dad in season 1, but perhaps this was one instance where the show writers went a little too far in trying to create some links between the seasons. I mean, the guy who gave Hansi the documents looks more like Tripoli than Hansi does. Maybe Hansi took his face. It just comes off as an obvious retcon, and to add to that, I'm sure many feel it's a disappointing end for the Hansi character. But after some time, some time to think, I actually started not to mind it. Of course, if it happened in something like The Wire, I'd say the show jumped the shark, but in a show with intentional absurdities like Fargo, it's easier to swallow, but it still is on the extreme end of the spectrum of the acceptable easter eggs. It's not as if it's too in your face and has massive implications in the story. In fact, it actually fits in with the themes of season 2 and Fargo as a whole. Having a man tired of serving an empire create his own and then having it crumble at the hands of another man as vicious as him is ironic, poetic and serving of that nihilistic feel the show has of the fact that evil and evil people will always exist and these cycles are ever continuous. The presence of evil is constant, and there's a further allusion to this with the fact that Malvo killed 22 people in addition to Tripoli, and in season 2, Hansi looks at a plaque saying 22 Indians were hanged here. Another link. Still though, Hansi feels like a character whose end works better as an enigma, as a mystery where we receive no closure. We know nothing about him and we don't know what happened to him. His decisions and the way he lives his life has clearly been affected by his upbringing, the abuse he has been dealt with, the trauma he would have experienced in the war. Tripoli seems like a completely different character, a slobbering Roman emperor who gouges down on his next meal while absent-mindedly listening to his minions. It is just difficult to see a man like Hansi become this man. It's just the fact that you have a whole season where this silent assassin is built into a complex, interesting character, and then in season 1, he has like one line, eats and dies off screen. Still though, 27 years. That's a long time. Long enough for someone's personality to completely change, especially if they've been sitting at the top of the food chain as a powerful crime boss in a position where they can afford to get lazy and indulgent. And really, who are we to judge Tripoli? Because we only saw him in one scene. Maybe the way he acted was some sort of dismissive intimidation tactic in front of his men. Or maybe the Tripoli we see is himself a kind of puppet. A frontman who Hansi has working as a different kind of face man. 
But now we really are in obscure fan theory territory. But it might be a way out for people who don't like the Hansi Tripoli thing. Because after all, would Hansi really change his race, so to speak, abandoning who he is? Maybe the proxy idea isn't too far-fetched. But the thing is, if a future season of Fargo revealed Hansi was still alive, operating from the shadows, it would feel like a retcon of a retcon. Interestingly, Fargo series creator Hawley has spoken on the Hansi Tripoli connection, and from his own words, it's clear it's not just a theory. I like the idea that Hansi emerges from this story as a winner on some level, he said, that this is an origin story for him as much as it is for Molly, and if we did our job right, there could be a sort of double realisation that this character grows up to be a character from the first season and is now dead. In case you're interested, Zahn McLaren, the actor who plays Hansi, has also spoken about the season 1 link. In fact, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, he was the one who explained the easter egg to the interviewer, saying, What was really cool was finding out who Hansi becomes. Did you get that? Hansi goes and he gets his facial change, his operation and all that, and he says a line, head in a bag, when he sees the kids. You know who those kids are, right? That's what surprised me. I didn't put it together when I read the script. I got to the set and they go, did you see what that twist was? And I go, no, no, what do you mean? He takes those kids under his wing. He turns into the guy in the first season who Billy Bob takes out. He's eating fish soup in the diner and then Billy Bob, in later episodes, you know the scene where he walks into the building and all you hear are gunshots, that's where he's taking me out. Yeah, it is kind of awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing how many people actually pick up on that. So what do you think about Hansi becoming Tripoli? Is it an awesome twist or did the writers drop the ball and ruin the Hansi character? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching. Before we finish, I'd just like to thank my patrons, Nicholas Curtis, Daniel P and Countess von Zarovich, and also my channel members, Michael Awatwi, Rikers, Damien Irving, The New On Goam 24, Lan Deng, Joe Grossberg and Cam Medina.